Here we are at another episode of Shift Ed, um, coming to you from Learn Quebec. Um, today, wow, we're lucky to uh, welcome Robert Mara Martellacci. Did I say your name, name Well Robert? said, well said. Chris. Nice. Um, from Mindshare Learning Technology, founder and president, and also from C2 Canada. Um, so welcome, Robert. Thanks for hopping on and, uh, and having a chat with us about some My pleasure. Tech. It's always good to be on the other side of the mic. Yes. Welcome to the other side, which is great. Um, um, check out uh, Robert's podcast as well. I'll put the link in the descriptor so you guys can check out what he talks about with um, other leading experts across Canada, across the world, I should say. So, Robert, I love always starting this with kind of a background of how did you get into this whole ed tech world? Like, where where are your beginning moments? You think that that sparked something in you, you that yeah, wanted absolutely. you to pursue ed tech? You know, it's one of those things. Be careful what you wish for. I uh, I was a university administrator at York University and running the business alliance, and uh, the chair of our board was good buddies with Kevin O'Leary, and he said, "Oh, mm -hmm. Kevin's launching this education company in Canada," and I I'm we were just getting on the internet in the late nineties. And I, uh, I said, you know, I'm really interested to learn more. And it all starts with expressing an interest and having a conversation. And from that conversation, I was uh, hired to be the country manager and launch the learning company school division. Uh, it's now literally 25 years ago, no idea about what ed tech, ed tech didn't exist as an acronym. Okay. And, right. um, and what I was getting, you know, if I knew everything that it would involve, I probably wouldn't do it. Sometimes it's good to be a little naive and, and it changed my life. You know, I had an opportunity to make a greater impact nationally and internationally in what I do today. Uh, cause it was an evolutionary process. I mean, we were, uh, the learning company became the largest ed tech company globally. It's a great case study at Tux University on it. We were sold to Mattel toys. It was a disaster, but through that disaster, there was a lot of learning. It was painful. Right. We went through a dozen acquisitions in 18 months. Uh, I was there a total of three years, and I really wondered whether I made the right decision. I wouldn't change it for the world, although I would be retired today if I was still at York, but <laughs> I still play on the faculty hockey team. I know you're a hockey guy, so I'm excited mm -hmm. to be playing tomorrow at lunchtime. But, you know, it really uh, opened me up to a whole new world and the opportunity to make a greater impact leveraging technology, tech-infused pedagogy, if you will. And it's uh, it's been a real journey. Um, I have to tell you, it's been a real journey. Absolutely. And it seems like the pace that technology advances at is a very high clip. So how do you... <laughs> How do you support people at keeping up with the pace of the turnover? Right. I mean, yeah, because it is at this rapid pace. And we know is the educational world is not um, as quick. <laughs> so yeah. how do you deal with that dynamic? Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, they talk about being on the edge, right? And it's a matter of not falling over the edge. And, and you know, I, I augmented my skills uh, several years into it. Uh, Pepperdine University master's degree. Uh, I know Ron Canyon, who is a former colleague of yours, um, Michael's brother, he, uh, yep. Dr. Canyon, he was good buddies with someone I knew well, Dr. Gary Steger, who uh, uh, in, enticed me to, to get into the master's in ed tech. And it, that was a, a PSN turning point, if you will, where I ended up getting a deeper understanding, inspired our conference that we just recently hosted that I'm happy to talk about, the 14th Canadian Ed Tech Summit, and our national e-magazine. They challenged us to change the world. And I said, I'm going to start one country at a time. And <laughs> we read, one of the books we read, you know, we read Selling the Dream by uh, Guy Kawasaki, former Apple evangelist. You know, we, we read another book around, you know, uh, marketing and 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 prodicizing you know ed tech uh tools and really you know it's a spectrum you have your early adopters you mentioned when we were talking earlier about you know hopefully we can get the other 90 percent you know mm -hmm. to embrace some form of tech infused pedagogy i'd like to think we're further ahead but one of the mm -hmm. shocking stats i recently heard was only nine percent 
of professors, according to ISTE, the International Society for Tech and Education Research, that professors in ed tech and faculties of education in the U.S. are modeling the use of ed tech for new teachers. Staggering 9% number because, you know, a lot of them are baby boomers like us. Or maybe me, sure, not you. Sure. You look a little younger. So, but <laughs> you know, we're we. There's a lot of moving parts, and one of the reasons why we partnered with the Faculty of Education last year, McGill, and this year at Ottawa U, was we know that it takes a village, and the village includes post-secondary institutions in preparing future teachers. If we're bringing in uh, teachers with, you know, it's like you know, just to a doctor going to see a doctor who's had only 9% exposure to the tools they're going to be using while they were going through medical school. I look. To That's do, scary. Uh, you know, that is scary. That's frightening. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, it's interesting too, that you're saying that, I mean, cause I see a lot of pre-service teachers and, you know, you always have this anticipation of oh, their younger digital natives, you know, whatever words you want to throw at them, but they are creatures of habit. So they are going to teach the way they were taught. Um, and we noticed that, that having them think out the outside the box of how to maybe do things in a different way, how could I incorporate ed tech, is not um, a natural instinct for them, um, which not. Is, is interesting to... Hold yeah, on. and on that note, so, you know, we had Dr. Michael Fullen speak at our summit on deep learning. Uh, mm -hmm. Ottawa Catholic School Board was our uh, School District of the Year Award winner last year. And uh, because of that, we hosted, co-hosted with them. I, Tom D'Amico, the director and CEO, I chatted with him and after McGill and said, we'd love to, you know, consider you consider hosting us. He didn't hesitate. You know, mm -hmm. he has that innovative spirit. They've been doing deep learning before he came into the role. And he, to his credit, he continued that vision uh, of deep learning and, you know, Fulham talks about technology being the, you know, the accelerator. Uh, so it's that tech infused pedagogy, if you will. So you, you're right. When you talk about some of the in-service teachers or new teachers, um, you know, there is a knowledge gap. And we had mm -hmm. that conversation and, and the skills agenda, which is very much embedded in me in what we do in, with C21 Canada, uh, right. that's part of our journey in telling the story, right? It is about right. storytelling and, and, and painting a picture and, and, and showing success right. stories. And, you know, I'm here in a co-working innovation center that has state of the art technology. We have co-op students uh, and interns that we have some co-op students coming in today that are doing a podcast. And I said to them, I said, you know, one of your projects is a podcast. They've never podcasted before. I said, figure it out. You're doing a podcast right. because that <laughs> is the way kids learn best. Give them a project, give them a challenge. I'm a big fan of challenge and problem-based right. learning. And, but they walk in here and they go for the first time, this is a cool place. Well, shouldn't every school <laughs> be a cool place to learn? This is where I talked about this morning in our EdTech report that went out there, our special edition, uh, Summit Reflections edition. I talked mm -hmm. about dismantling, destroying the archaic industrial model. Because as long as that exists and is pervasive, we can talk about EdTech all day. But it's not, you know, we take a, a broader approach to it. It's an ecosystem. And, and it's about learning environments of the future. And that was kind of the theme of our summit, <clears throat> taking a more holistic right. approach. So we brought in experts from across North America and beyond to really envision and challenge the thinking around the way we learn today. Yeah, absolutely. And Robert, what, what, what were some of your reflections about your summit? Like, right. what were some big takeaways that of you know, that innovation that maybe struck you um, or yeah. and, when you were and, surprised and, by. Well, I have to say, you know, uh, Ottawa U, we, we had the opportunity to do a site visit. And I, I'm telling you, it, it was the best environment I've seen. It's not inexpensive, I imagine. 
they renovated and added a new building. But I, ha- I have to say, uh, you know, that was a great introduction before the conference kicked off. It was a site visit. Uh, mm-hmm. And kudos to Ottawa U and uh, Richard Bar- Barwell, the, the dean, who had a vision. And But they're not all consistently the same. And mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, that was uh, an aha moment for a lot of the delegates who are you know, seeing things like that. I, I'm a, I had done a site visit. We have an innovative learning space here, work and learning space that we created. And that was inspired. Sure. It was problem solving exercise. I had an office mm-hmm. at York University. When I came back, I was on the uh, advisory board for the Institute for Technology and Education. And the dean said, you, you know, we got some extra space. Let's partner and post you here. Great for five years. Then they said, we need the space back. Hence, okay. Problem solving skills kicked in. I had this vision of creating a work and learning space closer to home, innovative. And that's what we did. And we were the first in North America to do it. And sometimes you got to take risks and you don't know going into it, not knowing everything and being a bit naive is not a bad thing. And that solved that challenge. But you know, uh, so again, the learning environments were critical. AI mm-hmm. was the rage, right? Like every right. every right. session had something about AI. So right. what I talked about was, yeah, AI is awesome. It has the potential to make us 30% more efficient so teachers can actually create lessons and with rubrics and recommended ed tech tools on like within 30 seconds. And then gives them extra time to spend with the students where that's the secret sauce where the magic happens. It's that, you know, as much as the conference was about ed tech, it was really about people connecting and sharing and inspiring each other. And the insights that we shared were, were incredibly powerful. But I talked about HI and someone, one of the presenters actually looked it up. It's hilarious. And who has their own ed tech company? I'm not going to mention the name. <laughs> And I gave them a, 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 a good poke about it because HI is about human intelligence. Mm-hmm. That is the driver. It's, you know, uh, AI is the catalyst, but the driver has to be HI in, yeah. in the equation because yeah. it's about people. For sure. For sure. And like that top, like AI is like, I mean, since November, since ChatGPT, the explosion, you know, this reactionary way that we had, oh, and we saw it just as, you know, the glass half empty instead of glass half full. How do you, how do you um, verbalize to teachers the positive aspects of AI where it right. can, I mean, you alluded to one right there where it can save you time so that you can have more time right. building those relationships with your kids. What are some other ways that you see AI as a positive influence on education. Absolutely. So we have our co-op students come in, our interns, and and I ask them to use it. You know, so they're creating content. Whether you're working on an assignment, you create an essay, and you want to uh, put it through chat GBT to, you know, enhance it or make improvements or ask it questions about what might be missing. You know, as long as you are the author of the, the product, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, in our case, you know, we do social media all day long and, you know, we're getting ready for the holidays and inspiring people and, and they come up with some great ideas working alongside this virtual AI assistant. So, you know, from that perspective, uh, giving students agency and letting them explore and discover and, and find, find the negatives in it. Like what's wrong with, mm-hmm. you know, how accurate is it? You know, put it through a test, right? Do your homework. But that's really the, the you know, uh, I was in Austin. I was honored to be invited down to Dell for a briefing. And, and Michael Dell comes into our um, session for 15, 20 minutes. And he talked about how AI is going to make their organization 30% more efficient. Hmm. So it's, right. it's, you know, yeah, there are, uh, there are cautionary measures that need to be taken. You need uh, a walled garden around it as a district, mm-hmm. and that's going to evolve. 
where districts can have their own content uh, available internally. And then, so you're not going outside into the, the World Wide Web, right? So it's more secure right. for teachers and students. So that's really right. important to figure that piece out. We are working on a, an app that will enable teachers to create and leverage the tools that are out there because that's one mm -hmm. of the big barriers, isn't it? Um, you know, there's mm -hmm. 500 ed tech companies doing business in Canada. How in the world is an average classroom teacher teaching grade three history figure out what makes sense to use? So we're working on a tool that's going to enable working with ed tech companies, enable them to figure out what, what tool is the right tool to use at the right time and create, Amazing. you know, imagine how efficient that would be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and kind of speaking uh, to this kind of um, <clears throat> idea of, getting kids kind of exposed to ed tech, you know, and, and technology in general. I mean, we're, we're, we're raising digital citizens in these days where at least they need to have an awareness. Right. What do you think are the most important soft skills or knowledge sets that kids yeah. need to start to master before they graduate right. to help them navigate this world that is, I mean, we were speaking about before the pace of right. change is just insane. How do how do right. we get these kids up to speed so that once they graduate, yeah, they so can navigate? It, it's a great question, and I like to call them essential skills. We have the seven C's, but uh, Ethan, who presented at our summit, was one of the winners of our National Schools of Future Student Invention Challenge. He was in grade three at the time, hmm. and he talks about uh, creativity and ideas and solving problems. He created this device to pull plastics out of the oceans and in, in great detail, like Leonardo da Vinci designed <laughs> all these <laughs> elements with on a piece of paper and he showed the PowerPoint. No one else had a PowerPoint to show that I had permitted <laughs> except him at Air Cross Canada checkup uh, panel and ethan got a resounding standing ovation <laughs> i've never cool. seen that happen as soon as he just everyone immediately stood up on their feet and gave him a standing ovation because he was so inspiring and and authentic and talking about ideas and solving problems aligned with the sustainable development goals. Kids right. today right. are very different than when we were growing up and in school. Mm -hmm. They, We were happy to find a job because there was this crush of baby boomers. There were no jobs for teaching, policing, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and today's kids, they want to make an impact. They want to solve yeah. challenges. They don't just want a job. That's yeah. that's the big uh, takeaway for me from what I see in the mindsets right. of kids. Are teachers aligned with that? Not exactly, because it's a different, the role of the teacher, you know, we talk about sage on the stage and guide on the side. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. some of them are kind of in between and, and you need, you need to be agile, right? We're preparing agile, resilient learners and leaders for the future is what we're doing our teachers there yet not everyone is some will come kicking and screaming but what i will tell you this is that ottawa catholic school board has alignment from top to bottom that vision that they've been on is baked in throughout the system and that was mm -hmm. why they were school district of the year unparalleled mm -hmm. leadership and that is paramount today right right I love too how we're talking about ed tech. You know, you'd think we'd be talking about the latest tool and this and that. And we always, you're always saying it's about learning, about creativity, problem solving. You, you're not saying, yeah, if you use this app, it's going to unlock all these. Like, it's not yeah. about that, right? It almost becomes right. invisible. And you start right. talking and asking questions. And somebody told me from AI when when they when they approach AI is, 
to contour is it forces you to ask good questions. And I think as teachers, I remember we had a class on asking good questions. So it's less on, let me tell you, then, mm -hmm. well, let's figure things out. Um, similar to what you were alluding to with, yeah, the, with the guy on the so side. The, the yeah. notion of prompt engineering as a career pathway is, is fascinating. Um, and one of the speakers that we had uh, present uh, was a graduate of Gonzaga here at the Peel Catholic District School Board. And, uh, and Clive, on his own, found a program at uh, the uh, uh, University of London uh, on, on data analytics. Went on to do a master's degree at the London School of Economics and got his dream job with the NFL by going on LinkedIn and finding the right people to reach out to without any support from the career or guidance counselors. It cost him 12,000 Canadian to do both degrees. Well, hmm. nobody at the guidance office has any clue about what he did. And, and so we shared his story in the recent report. And, and that speaks to the, the student of the future. He's ahead of the curve, but you know, mm -hmm. he's a data analyst engineer with the NFL, uh, looking at, you know, the concussion safety and analyzing data every week. Like, how cool is that? Yeah. You know, amazing. that is something that <laughs> leaders need to talk about. Not the typical, yeah. oh, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a police. You know, data engineer, CFL, NFL. <laughs> oh, right? Uh, Where's the Tom connection? But there Tom, is, right? Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. Tom D'Amico is the head NHL official off ice. He's been doing that for 25 years. They started doing stats, counting shots on goal. Then he started counting mm -hmm. hits. <laughs> you know, penalty minutes. Now they have 40 cameras and through AI, they are capturing the data, automatically telling them who's taking the face-off. How many face-offs were won? How many hits? How many shots? And now they've had to be retrained and he's got a team of six to, to process the data. Right. That is the future teachers authentic data too right? right which is like so i mean get other, kids excited about numbers get them right. to gather data <laughs> and then analyze it it's exactly you know uh dell came up with data dunkers uh with one of the uh raptor players foundation mm -hmm. and created this program to integrate basketball into the math curriculum into stem right. and yeah and one of the fascinating things now that AI will enable leaders to do as a superintendent or director, I can get agile data, full data, dynamic data on student attendance, performance, mm -hmm. gaps, ab right. absenteeism, and it will be live data. That's what, mm -hmm. that's what AI will enable. So some of the companies, now we can talk about some of the ed tech companies, and their need to be embracing AI because they will be left behind. Right. The risk is school districts, institutions, post-secondary institutions may not, some may not exist in the form they are today if they don't embrace the future of a tech. Hmm. It's just a reality because yep. kids are going to micro-credentialing. Uh, I was at the World conference uh, on distance education last week you know you you there are two million students enrolled in pakistan in mm -hmm. this open university that offers micro credentials they have mm -hmm. two hundred and sixty thousand enrolled in the paid version which each credit is like two dollars and fifty cents or some incredibly inexpensive because they want to educate the entire country more rapidly so there are other countries innovating. We can't rest on our laurels. Canada is a great country to, to live and, and work and, and learn. But I feel like there's this, when you get into this comfort level, you become kind of lulled into believing you're the best 
and you you kind of ease your foot off the gas pedal. Well, the reality is, you know, I spend time internationally and I know that we need to push push that gas pedal and, you know, stay within the limits, of course, but we can't rest on our laurels. Absolutely. Well, Robert, this has been a really fascinating conversation and maybe just to kind of wrap up, um, wh- how do you support educators across the province with your, yeah. with, at the Mindshare Learning? Like, what yeah. are some of the things or services that you guys question. offer? Yeah, so we publish our e-magazine uh, weekly, uh, the Canadian EdTech Report. Monthly, we do a national or North American edition. And uh, and we share best practices, success stories. We have the Schools of the Future Challenge through an invention challenge. We pivoted from a teacher, show us how, how you're using EdTech to engage uh, kids, to a student invention challenge. Because that's the evolution that's happened. The student is now at the center. So we have that taking place. So we, you know, we work at the teacher level you know, along with our clients that we work with, like Dell, like Nelson, and others mm-hmm. that, you know, uh, Steamworks Studio is another one that's actually in our workspace that has incredible tools and, and resources to help teachers engage their students in more meaningful ways. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I encourage everybody to go check out um, the Mindshare Learning Technology website. I'll put it in the descriptor. Sure. Um, and again, Robert, I mean, we could spend hours talking. Yeah, I know we can do a whole series. We could, we could just <laughs> drive off of each other for hours. Yeah. But it was a real pleasure having you. I, I'm really Thank thankful you. that you took some Chris. time out of your day to have a yeah. chat. And I wish you all the best. And well, hopefully our paths will run into each other eventually. Yeah, down absolutely. The road. And kudos to you for doing this because it really is through storytelling that we yes. help, uh, you know, people understand better the, the power and potential of tech infused pedagogy and, and, and change the world. Amazing. One teacher at a time. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Robert. Pleasure.